What's up, Papa Power Ass Crew? Today's video, I'm not going to say is a very good tutorial. More of a hints and tricks type video, but we're doing... Camera's backward in my view. Dash speakers. Now, like I said, this isn't going to be a very good you know, how-to tutorial, step-by-step, -step, things like that, because I was really trying not to drop the windshield, trying not to tear my dash apart. I mean, you know, take out all the gauges and stuff like that. So I use rust bucket, which has most of the gauges already taken out of it to show you ways to get into it. So if you elect you want to take out your gauges to reach it, it's totally up to you. Uh, at the very end of the video, I showed, I used these little push on nuts. They were quick, they were easy, and they really saved me a lot of headache. So. Take this video for what it's worth. It's not really what you call one of my best tutorial videos, but at least gives you an idea of what you're getting into when you change out these speakers. Cool. Let's roll. So over here on the driver's side, I got a little bit of an advantage. I don't have to deal with getting that speaker out of there because it wasn't there when I got the Jeep. But another advantage it gives you as the viewers is that you get an opportunity to see actually what is going on behind that. I mean, it's broad daylight out here, so it's not going to give me exactly what I hoped it was going to give me. But let me show you something. Let me switch out here. Okay, get the camera up close to it. And look at your e-brake right there. Go just to the right of the e-brake. Get in behind the harness. Got to get around my harness here. Right there. And I, I got I like plenty of room. I can reach that stud right there. Can we get a little bit more contortion here? I can get that one. And that one up there. Now mind you, it's not gonna be completely easy. But what they see this one up here would take. So I've got a bar right there that's kind of in the way. This one right here, I'd probably use a uh, socket, just a shallow socket, and simply no ratchet or anything attached to it and just kind of use it like a thumb ratchet and roll it up just screw it off by hand because more times than not when you take the bottom ones loose but this one over here with a deep well you can get into this right here a deep well uh, socket this one over here you can get to this one with a deep well socket which will make the speaker loose because up here in this corner mine don't have a stud up there whatsoever now is it broken? I don't know. Let's see if I can feel it up there. <clears throat> no, I don't even feel like there's ever been one right there. Wait a minute, right there. I guess I do feel one right there. So that right there would be pretty interesting to get to it because you've got that. See that red right there? You're gonna have that in the way. And so, I mean, to cram your hand upside there with the speaker there, that upper left, right here, that would be the problem child. Now, here's the speakers that I'm using. Nothing special. No, they're not blah punk. They're not Infinities. They're not any of those high dollar brands because I'm just not going to spend the money for it. This is, this rigs my daily driver. It's not a concert hall. I mean, it's just a toy. And my driver too, as I just said. I just don't see the point of spending that kind of money for something that's I don't care to leave the top off of and it gets rained on. But here is one of the drawbacks to it. The mid and the tweet sits above the mounting flange. When you put the mounting flange directly to the surface of this, this is going to hit. Now, you can actually run up there and let this right here hit. This right here, and it just as long as you don't crank it tight, you'll be okay. That's not going to damage this right here too much but your other option would be to take quarter 20 nuts and stack them up on the studs that's up underneath here because two of them will space you out enough to keep the face keep those uh mids and tweets up off the metal front right here off that so two quarter 20 nuts stacked on top of those studs will give you about what you need. So I'm going to reach my hand upside there. I'm going to go ahead and slide those onto the studs and cram a speaker up inside there. Now as you see, looking through the speaker grill right there, sliding those nuts on for spacers to hold the speaker out so the mid and tweet don't hit the face right here. And I've already got the ones up here 
here and here like I said I'm not gonna fight that one another thing that will help you access the speaker is just taking the uh, e-brake out you got one bolt right there and you got two in the back right behind all that right there it's a stud that goes through the wall right there so you know it's actually on the other side of the firewall and that little light right there Phillips head screwdriver take that out of the way and make this right, this right here a little easier to access as well now one of the most common methods is is to completely remove the dash and here's why I'm not going to do that. Oftentimes these hinges right here are so seized up that once you try to, once you get these bolts loose right here, once you get them right there loose where the, that, and of course you got your ones appearing in your spreader bar, then your windshield's loose, your windshield has to lay forward at that point, which will expose the screws right in the top of this, which goes all the way across the dash to the uh, passenger side. Well, oftentimes the knot that hinge right here is so seized up that it doesn't want to move. Then you get your people who go like, well, I'm going to make it move. I'm going to push. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Next thing you know, you busted your windshield. Honestly, the easiest method would probably be lay the windshield forward, take all those screws out. But, you know, in a perfect world, that's fine. But in the everyday world where crap's rusted all the pieces, it's going to be a pain and you're risking damage and such. So, so I'm not taking that option. Kicker makes a kit that takes this little plastic insert that you drop in right here and it drills out the holes where the studs are. Then you bolt in the new ones. There's an option. I think uh, Quadratech has it for like, I don't know, it's like 170 bucks for the kit or something like that. So Rust Bucket still has this driver size speaker and I've got all the dash components and everything taken out of it for, you know, I was making videos a while back on how to remove stuff. Uh, so I went ahead and took, took these right here out and you can see right there is that speaker nut and the top one you're not gonna really get to very well but if you take your cluster out I can touch right there I'm on it and with a regular socket I can get to it if I remove the speed outer so and I'll link those videos up on how to remove the speed outer so that way you can get into it to do it now this one's a 93 that was a 91 the speedometers, clusters, stuff like that do come out different, but not by a whole lot of different. So I'll link that video up. Like I said, this one's a 93. And it'll give you an idea if you've got an earlier model like that one, because that was uh, the, being the 91. Again, the dash cluster is a little bit different than those. And this thing sits back here so much, I'm afraid to stick my hand beside it for walkers. Just so it makes it easier for me to line these up, I know which holes to go for, because these uh, four by six come out with multiple holes in them. If you look, dang on it, stay. If you look right here, you can see where the uh, factory nuts were before. A little hex shape right there on them. So all you gotta do is look straight down through there, say yeah, so it's that hole right there, and that's hole right there. So if you want to, you can take your magic marker or something. A sharpie and mark the holes that you need that way you can try to eyeball them when you stick them up inside the dash so what I'm gonna do is feed that speaker from right down through here go up through here obviously and see where my hands waving at you there's a wide open hole right there and all you fellas say oh, I got really big hands dude I've got my hand wide open right there you got plenty of room right here it's whenever you get up in this neck of the woods right here is when you gotta have the problem and as I showed you on rust bucket take out your cluster you can go in from this way and that way and get to that one so I'm robbing the nuts that holds the speaker in out of rust bucket I'm using this little thumb ratchet right here I'm getting in from right here and I can get I'm on that top one right there and I'm taking it out right there pretty easy so I'm working on this bottom left right here and like I showed you on that rig up there, yep. Like I showed you on that rig up there, how you go in between the wiring harness, which is what I'm doing here. And I was hoping to pray and I was sticking my hand to a wasper nest. But I've got that little palm ratchet on it. Listen. The bottom left one. I'm taking it off right now. Ta-da! Another one. And by the way, I'm using a number nine, nine millimeter socket. If your rig happens to come with a wiper delay module, you're going to have two screws right there. Just drop that sucker out of the way, and that'll give you more room to get beside here. Look at that. Oh, crusty, rusty rust bucket.
Got intermittent wiper. Hmm. But I'm gonna put that in that one. The bottom right screw, and since I've got this uh, speedometer taken out, right, the socket then fell off. There it goes. Right there, I'm backing it off. And so just to be complete, I went and grabbed me a number nine wrench, went in from this way, and this top left one right here, I can get to it. And I've, if you had a quarter a quarter inch drive, nine millimeter, I'm pretty with a uh, deep well. Feel, yeah, if you had a quarter inch drive ratchet with a uh, nine millimeter deep, you could definitely get to it. Because I'm, I mean, I'm like turning it right now. So a quarter inch drive, nine millimeter deep. We'll get that right there if you pull your speedometer out. Ta da! It's mounted. It's done. Oh, I'll show you. She's solid. I'll get my hand back there again. It's a whole lot of shoving that wiring harness around to get up in there, but you can see I'm moving it or trying to move it. It's not moving. But I have a confession to make. I'll show you. I went and got a set of these right here at the hardware store or Lowe's here local to me. Got a set of these because then I can take the socket and hold on to it here, this flange would ride on the socket where I could push and put it on at the same time. Took a piece of tape, put over this right here, and put it up inside the socket where it would stay put. It made it a lot easier to hold that in place. And that one actually only went there. And I told you I wasn't even gonna waste my time for that one because I'm not, I didn't want to take up a cluster. Or my, I, just, I, say, I keep saying cluster, I like the, the whole gauge cluster, but I didn't want to take out my speedometer. I was being bullheaded. Now right here and here, I did something different. See that right there? Yeah, that's the way I end up going. I end up taking the small one in here. Let me set up on size. Get right there. I wonder how O'Reilly's can got these. The little small one right there. It is about right to get up on that post, then take you a socket. I used a seven millimeter socket to ride right up on that. Let me show you here. See how it sits right on that flange? It was about right for that to sit on there. Then I took the socket and pushed it up on that uh, threaded shaft. It worked out perfect. And it's good and tight. It was not hard. I was able to get that one up there in there. Coming from under the dash going up. That right there was pretty easy. Again, I used those little push nut assortment. Got these at O'Reilly. Made life a lot easier. Now the passenger side, as you can see, I had one of the lock boxes in. What I did for this right here, I took out all this right here. Took out the glove box. And what you gotta do is, you got three screws up here, as you can see in my lockable here. And you got two screws here and two screws here, but they're in behind the dash. And I'll include a video where I put this in. I'll use those segments of the video to show you how to take all this right here out. What I took out was the glove box and I took out the radio. I went through the radio here to get to these two screws here. And these two right here weren't too bad going up beneath the dash. But once I got all that out of the way, that was easy. So, here's those videos. So to start out with, you got three screws up top, which I've already been missing for a long time to begin with. Then take these screws out right here across the bottom, which loosens, allows this bottom right here to separate. But the fun ones are behind here. There's two screws back in behind here, and two screws in behind here, of course, well, I mean behind, like you gotta go upside here to get to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these right here out and then we'll work on getting them back there. So to get these out, quarter inch socket, or in my case, I'm using this uh, multi-bit driver right here, using the quarter inch. They come out. So for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna cram my phone up inside the dash here so I can show you guys where those screws are located. So let's do it. Let's see, get up here so we get a little bit of a focus thing going on. There's the back side of the speaker. Right there. See those two Phillips head screws? Yeah, you got two on this side and two on the other side. Get them out of there. Have fun with that. Got two out. Show you what I'm using to get this done. 
using a little stubby ratchet right here by Tecton, and I'll link it up. I'll put some links for you guys can buy these tools if you want them. And a little thumb ratchet with the bit that fell out of it. Not that one. I got a short one somewhere that I done dropped, apparently. Okay. You know, I got a little small, short, uh, four-way bit right here that I got to find now. Yeah, that's good. So in terms of the type of bit I was using, I don't, still don't know where I, my, it's what I just found. I go in the house, get my kit here, just so I can get another bit, and I look around, and there it is. But anyway, that's what I'm using. Well, I'm glad I found it anyway. So I'm trying to get to these two back here, and dude, it's tight back there. So I'm going to go ahead and take all this right here off. I was trying to avoid it because of the extra stuff I got going on with wiring here and that and all that stuff. It's one of those cases to where if the radio wasn't there, it wouldn't be so bad. So I'm going to pull all this off and see if I, pull the, I might pull the radio out or I might be able to get it behind the cluster right here. I don't know. So I'm going to pull this right here off and see what I can get to. So to pull this off, screw there, screw there, screw there. Then you got three that goes across right across through there. Okay, got that out of the way. Now I'm going to take these two screws out right here, which should allow the radio to pull back out of the way, which will give you better access to those two screws. The screws are right, right along in here, so removing the cluster is not really going to give you what I need. But if I get the radio out of the way, I should be able to just tuck my hand up inside the radio hole here and be able to get to it. So, two screws, one right there, one right there. So got that out of the way. I'm going to take my hand, stick it right beside here. Turn it up a little bit. Right. Oh, I felt a minute ago. Right there. So I can touch both screws from right here. So I should be able to take my driver here and go up inside like it right there and get two of them now. So that's what I'm going to do, but I can't do that in the camera both. I've got my left hand stuck through the radio hole with the ratchet hanging down right here. And I'll take my right hand and I'll work the ratchet to back the screw out. Now we get the other one. Then after you go through all that, it'll slide right out. Yay, conquered. And for this little contraption right here, it's called a thread cutting nut that I used on this spot right here. It worked really well. It is for a 3 8 hex, 5 30 second stud. And like I said, I got this at Lowe's. So there's what you need to know. All right, my power ass crew, I told you that wasn't like one of the best tutorial videos out there on this. Now, you guys can drop down in the comments the other techniques you guys use to change out your speakers. But if this video gave you an idea of what is involved into doing this and it helped you, be sure to hit that thumbs up. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and just cool comments down below. Appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.